God bless Brother Judah. Amen. Let's see. So it's Pro Proverbs chapter 1. I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom, and the integrity of the upright shall guide them. But the per perverseness of the tr transgressors shall destroy them. You may be seated in Jesus' name. I do pray, I do pray that uh, the, the word of God that was mined and extracted would uh, be uh, received on fertile soil. The seed of God's word would never, uh, <clears throat> uh, never not bloom in your life. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Never not bloom. Bro, is that grammatically sound or not? I'm not sure. But, but God knows. God can use a talking donkey. He, surely he can use a Southwest Georgia native. <laughs> Amen. So uh, this morning, this morning, my topic will be, uh, God help me with this, it will be tools that separate, tools to separate. Uh, yeah, I do have some uh, vintage tools on the very front row here. Uh, yeah, I'll just ask your participation. So if, if we will, we just stand, right, if, you, if you're able to stand. You're welcome to just kind of circle back around here. Do watch the camera. There's, uh, there, there's some vintage tools right here. And they do have a purpose. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother, sister. These tools, these tools have a function. And you might not know exactly what they are. You might not know exactly what they do. But that doesn't stop the potential, the potential of the tool. Uh, you know, the tool, nevertheless, I don't have to go into the definition of what a tool is. But if a tool is used in a negative connotation, you, you're talking about like a person, that's a negative thing. Like he and she are a tool. But no, these tools, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Now these tools have a certain function. They do. And uh, the church itself is a, a tool for God. In Jesus' name, it has certain functions, certain characteristics about it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right, we'll just take another moment or two. We'll ask you to be seated. In Jesus' name. So, uh, Jesus will say, Well done, thou faithful servant, or he will depart, or he will say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Amen, amen. So, the, just the gravity, the gravitas of that, that statement, uh, you know, the Word of God is a, is a tool. And uh, it, it's it's here to uh, shape and mold us in 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 the fashion that God wants. So uh, yeah, I do pray that we we'd continue to be led uh, along the path of righteousness, and we would uh, choose to live for God today while it is the day of salvation. All right. Now some of these tools, some of these tools here are made for concrete. Some are uh, you know binding uh, tools. Others others move uh, dirt and so forth. All right. To uh, to not let the word of God be uh, you know distracted upon. We we'll ask you to be seated. In Jesus' name, God has His word. Uh, we, we get into in Jesus' name. So like, the word of God today is going to be instructive. It's uh, it's for you. Uh, we we'll ask you to go to First uh, John, First John chapter two, verse seventeen. Uh, the first one to uh, reach it, say Amen. First John chapter two, verse seventeen. Amen. Well, that wasn't me, but that was a, amen. So, uh, 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. We'll ask, we'll ask Pastor Walden to read that, if, if you would, sir. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Walden. Uh, so the world will fall away with the lust thereof, but he who does the will of God will live forever. Lord. In several accounts this morning, the lives of Samson from Judges chapter 13 through uh, his birth to his death three chapters later. I hope to highlight the tools that he threw away. Again, I like to talk about Samson not as a character study, but just to highlight several things about the tools he threw away. In uh, chapter, chapter 15 verse 17, the jawbone that is. One specifically, he threw that away. See, uh, when uh, we will also see, even since uh, the, f you know, whatever century that was, Samson was around, the world system, the flesh, and the and Satan still persist. We'll, we'll see how that victory uh, 
what was won and lost, and he lacked appreciation for it. We we'll correlate that to the church and uh, for the church to take heed uh, to the word of God. And then, then the three Hebrew young men who were cast into the fire for not bowing in worship of Nebuchadnezzar with a, with a made up mind. We'll talk about that as a tool, a made up mind. That's good, in a made up mind. Uh, as a critical tool for attaining their victory, how, how they got their victory. And so, that w furthermore, uh, we we'll contrast between the two characteristics of flesh, the sarks, and faith and obedience as tools as well. Finally, the tools given to the church in function to save and deliver and restore. So first, praise the Lord, God be our helper this morning. Samson was mighty in strength. He had, he had received uh, by God through a covenant. We'll go to Judges chapter 15. Samson, I don't know his age, but I do know he, he is a uh, Judges chapter 15. Samson is, is a human being, flesh, or Samson was a human being, flesh and bone, just like you and I. He, he was stricken. He was stricken with the curses from the fall. Uh, Genesis chapter 6. He was stricken with that, just as likewise we are as well. Judges, Samson, Samson, his life, his life will start. We'll start with that. Praise the Lord. Like Isaac, Samuel, and John, John the Baptist, Samson was um, a special gift to a barren woman. The angel of the Lord appeared uh, to the wife of Menorah, a Danite, no kin to me. A Danite of Zorah uh, in Judah, promising uh, that the th though she was bearing, she will conceive and bear a son. Uh, that must be set apart, set apart to to God from birth, the, the moment of birth. So it, it, we, we'll go to Judges again, and just by a set of hands, who has that? Who has that right away? All right. So it is Bible school. It is like Sunday school. You know, we, we learn the books of the Bible, and, and it's good. It's good to. Uh, Know them, memorize them one by one. Know exactly where they're at. Uh, First Kings, Second Kings, Chronicles. You know Nehemiah. You know it's, it's good to know exactly where they're at. And so Judges chapter thirteen uh, starts the birth of uh, Samson. Not really going to be a character study on him, as as we we mentioned. Right, praise the Lord. So Samson, Samson received strength in chapter 15, verse 6 through 20. He received that strength. And so he, 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 was, he was able, he, just mighty strength. I mean, you know, strength like none other. He, that was a characteristic and a trait that he received. And, uh, you know, his life is written in record for our learning and is very instructive for us. We're, we're going to see where he had some, getting ahead of myself. He, like we are, subjects to the fall of man since the very beginning at Eden. Inherited traits and, and curses, but God. Can you say, but God? But God. But God. So God's all victorious, even from the very beginning of the world. God uh, had shed, uh, I'm looking for a special guest, special guest and, uh, you know, some visitors that don't really know the oneness of God. You know, God is numerically one. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. Uh, you, you know, we know that uh, even from the very beginning, you know, Adam and Eve had sinned. The, the Garden of Eden, they, they ate and partook the, uh, the forbidden fruit. And all of humanity thereafter fell, was su subject, subject to uh, the judgments, righteous judgments of God. But in Samson, let's see where he started to have trouble. Judges chapter 14. This is just some, uh, some survey peaks about Samson. He was attracted by a Philistine woman named Tamaya, uh, or Tim, uh, praise the Lord, it's Tim, Tim, Tim. And so he was attracted to her. He had, uh, you know, basically become, so he was separated onto God, but yet he still had his flesh. The lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the, the arrogancy of, of self-absorption. He was like, uh, he was a mighty man in, in much respect. But then he had the carnality, the carnality about him. This is not just, uh, you know, my ego, my opinion. This is the word of God. This is the, Samson. Samson, he was mighty in strength, 
but he started to look at himself as as being somebody instead of being humble so let's see so we're at uh, so mighty in strength brother do you have those uh, do you have those uh, visual uh, powerpoints no sir, no, sir. okay that, that's fine so uh, he was mighty in strength he had some problems he, he, he had some problems and they started to manifest they started to manifest uh, along his journey all right so we'll start we'll, we'll read in uh, chapter 14 and Samson went down to Tamiah and saw a woman in in Timoth the daughter of the Philistines and he came up and told his father and mother and said I have seen a woman in Tamiah uh, please forgive me if those pronunciations wrong of the daughters of the Philistines and therefore get her for me a wife and then the, his father and mother said unto him is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among the, my people that thou should go to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines so here God tells us to be God tells you to be equally yoked and like minded God doesn't want us just to wed and marry and be, be uh, unequally yoked God wants us to be equally yoked Samson although he was set aside God is separate God is holy and God says uh, you know, therefore you be holy if you want to be with me walk with me have a walk with me you have to be holy and separate uh, well, we're getting to where Samson threw it all away he he went ahead and wed uh, some 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 uh, verses later he, he attended his wedding he started to be a let's see getting into my notes again the path the, the path of trying to follow God without being willing to turn from sin this was Samson trying to follow God without willing to turn from sin we call that repentance yeah. We call that, and it's still good. That's a tool. Yeah. Repentance is still a tool, yeah. Oh, yeah. but it doesn't stop there. Uh, so illicit, illicit deals and relationships, you know, it just doesn't work. Delilah, Delilah being an unequally yoked uh, person, not compatible with, for his walk with God. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. Praise the Lord for God's Word. God's Word has been preserved throughout all the history. And I'm convinced of it more so now than ever before. As I read it and study it and become stronger in the world, no doubt of it. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them that make haste. So if vengeance belongs to God. Yeah. There were several things as, as he became a party He became a party boy At that wedding He started to defile everything that ever was in his life Almost kind of sound like the prodigal son So uh, you know in those days In those days they, uh, they didn't really have a whole lot of entertainment So it was said that he had to come up with a riddle To keep the audience captivated You know something that they, they had to find out The answer to the question and he had a riddle, and, and uh, you, you know nobody could come up with the answer. He he told his bride, and his bride kind of let the cat out of the bag. Old cliche, and you know the word got back around uh, that the audience knew exactly the, what the riddle was. Samson got very angry, and again God says, uh, "Vengeance belongs to me; uh, I will repay." Okay. Samson went, and uh, you know he, he, he as a as a result, what happened? You know, he he looked upon the, the, the Philistines' whole harvest and he took foxes, the foxes, and tied their tails together and lit up a, a fire. And the whole harvest was just ruined, ruined. These, this man had uh, now become, uh, you know, I taught a lesson here. I taught a lesson about the failures of ancient man. And this was part of the failure of ancient man. Just taking vengeance into his own hand. Then he started to become a. He just just wild. Samson takes matters into his own hands instead of counseling with God. He seeks revenge by setting setting the people's harvest afire and killing and slaughtering many men. Mm. Samson Samson is not portrayed in a very good light in my eye. Vengeance is the Lord, but Samson failed. Deuteronomy thirty two thirty five and Romans Romans chapter twelve verses uh, nineteen. Romans twelve verse nineteen. The vengeance is mine; I will repay. Mm. Come on. We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You and I aren't, aren't God. You and I aren't God. Come on. 
Samson started to, to self-reflect and look upon himself as, as, as self-righteousness. He started to look upon himself as, as if he, God's given gifts are from God and not from you. Uh, you know, if you get angry, if you get angry, the Lord says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Let, let, me, let me tell you a little side note about, about uh, you know, they, I talked to a notable person in recent days past, and he, he said the leading cause of death, the leading cause of death, and this struck me, it struck me, and I had to do some research on it. Leading cause of death isn't, uh, you know, accidents, cars, COVID, not a heart disease. And he, the answer was, are you ready? You ready? It's anger. Anger. And so, I mean, he went through the flow chart of what anger does. F anger causes acidity. Acidity in the blood causes holes in the arteries. Plaque fills the arteries. Uh, plaque builds up upon plaque, upon plaque, then things get blocked. Heart, heart disease, heart problems. Anger, all from anger. So Samson failed. Samson failed. L let us walk in the light as God's in the light. We have fellowship one with another. R Samson can tell us something this morning. These tools can really help us this morning. Right. Samson was led astray down by the path of the course of this world, became a party boy, Be had illicit sexual appetites. Is it all right if I tell the truth? In Jesus' name. Illicit sexual appetites, preoccupation with himself. Instead of looking at the author and finisher of his faith, he started to look inward at his, at, at, at his, at his himself. Going where he should not have gone. Doing things that he shouldn't have done. Samson could not resist the lure, the lure of foreign women. Just like Israel could not resist the lure of foreign gods. Both of them, both of them, as, is, as was said in, as I was doing research, Samson became a microcosm like Israel, or an example, an illustration. Uh, Samson, his life, his life started where his mom and dad separated him onto God. But towards the very end, you'll see that he ended up being his own demise. Along with Satan's uh, uh, motivation, the world system's motivation, and his flesh. Was, was he a total tool for Satan? Or was Satan trying to, or was, what, what was his function? What was his design? God, God has set him apart for his own service, a tool for his own service to do and, and be and his, do his great will. Whatever God's will was, Samson was to do it. Well, let's see, but I want to show you where he threw it all away. This is Judges, Judges chapter 15. In Judges chapter 15. And, and, and my Lord, if, if you have gifts and talents that God's given, don't throw them away. Amen. If there's been victory, if there's been victory, don't throw them away. Don't backslide, front slide. If you feel backslid in your heart, you can find an altar. If you feel backslid in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, you can front slide to God. You don't have to act, you don't have to stay there. Let's see where Samson, Samson threw it all away, at his own will. Judges chapter 15. Well, I'll tell you exactly which verse in just a moment. We love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all you continue to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Samson, I don't know his name, but I know he's recorded in history for our learning, for our, for our edification, for our building up. Just like every wicked king before and prior after him. Therefore, our learning. And so in, in chapter 15, verse 14, and, and when he came, and when he came, this is uh, again, Judges 15, verse 14, and when he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords, the cords were um, upon his arms, uh, became flax, and were burnt with fire, and the bands were loosened off his hands, and he found a new jawbone of a donkey, an uh, animal uh, of burden, and he put forth his hand and he took it, and he slew a thousand men wherewith. A jawbone of an animal of burden. And Samson with the, that heaped, heaps upon heaps, the jawbone of the donkey slayed a thousand men. Verse 17. And it came to pass, when he made an end of speaking, he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called the place 
ram, rameth I high, the best of my ability. So he threw it, threw it aside. I mean, it seemed like, you know, something like that uh, that brought victory. He might have had a holster made, put it on his hip. He done killed a thousand men. He might as well keep up with it, you know. But just cast it to a side. Holiness. Separating yourself onto God. Don't throw it aside. God's everywhere, all seeing, all knowing. And He's able to see you right where you're at, 24-7. 24 by 7, 365. Anytime, anywhere, God sees. Don't throw it aside. Set yourself apart. And we'll see the three Hebrew boys in a total 100%, 180% uh, or 360 degree, 180, you know, you'll see it 100% where they, just the opposite. They didn't throw it away. But Samson did throw it away. And he threw it away. But nevertheless, look at the pride that he has in the next, in the next little bit. And he was sore of thirst and called upon the Lord, verse 18, and thou hath given, listen to this, saints of God, thou hath given, this is not the way how, how to talk to God, how to conduct oneself. Thou hast given this great deliverance unto the hand of thy servant, and how shall I die for thirst and fall into the hands of the, the uncircumcised? Just total pride, arrogancy. You know, you done did all this, God. You, now you, you ain't going to go take me all the way. Yeah, it's a wonder. It's a wonder that God, uh, you know, just didn't turn his back. But God didn't turn his back. And so this, this, this is a uh, point that I bring to you, extracting it from the Word of God for your benefit. If you cast something aside before, seek God's face, hunger and thirst for righteousness, and God will be right back where, where you found him, right, right where you left him. God's so faithful. And I happen to think, I happen to think that our blue cosmic speck in the whole universe Although we're small, God's big. We're bigger than you think you are, if that makes sense. You're bigger than what you think you are. You have more purpose and more, more uh, mission than you can ever imagine. That's on a universal scale, not just a planetary Earth terra firma scale. This is on a whole galactic magnitude. So... Uh, Towards the end, Samson continues to display his strength. He continues to have his uh, fornication. He continues to uh, be a party boy. Uh, he likes to get the center of attention. He's captured again in, in verse 21 of 16, chapter 16. He's captured again. He, in verse 28 of chapter 16, verse 28, he calls upon the Lord. Samson. Samson calls upon the Lord. O oh Lord, remember me, I pray thee, and, my, and strengthen me, I pray thee. <clears throat> you know, God's faithful. God, God didn't answer him. God didn't answer him. God didn't come back for him. And this is the same way with Israel's case. And, and, and sometimes, in some instances, God didn't answer Israel. They were left to, to, to captivity. They were left to the elements. They were left to the scorpions. The elements, the famines. <clears throat> and so towards the end here, towards the end, he, he was locked. He was locked among these two pillars as the historical narrative accounts. <clears throat> he was locked between these two pillars. And he, he, uh, he shook those pillars down. And ultimately, you know, I'll leave it up to God to be his judge. Did he commit suicide by killing himself and the others? That, that he aimed to kill or what but that's the story of Samson's life Samson so it, it, it's not saints of God it's not that shake the hand uh, shake the hand of a pastor uh, accept the Lord accept the Lord and you'll be saved no the Lord has to accept you the Lord has to accept me we have to be acceptable in His sight. We have to have sacrifices and communion and a, a walk with God. I have, to bring, I have to bring His presence down. God might not want to be in my presence. Just like Samson. God didn't want to be in Samson's presence. Didn't answer him when he called for strength. It wasn't supposed to be this way, Samson. A whoremonger, a drunker, a re re reviler, a murderer, a fornicator. It wasn't supposed to be this way. And don't throw away the tools that, that bring you victory. Don't throw them out. They, they, they have significant meaning 
And it's supposed to take you all the way, and you're supposed to reflect on them time and time again. The same tools that brought me victory then can bring me through again, and again, and again. People, people say, uh, not us, but some people just say, accept the Lord. No, no, the Lord has to accept us. The Lord has to accept us. Praise the Lord. So we talked about Samson. Now we're going to move uh, next in a total contrast to, we're talking about tools again. Tools. The three Hebrew boys, they're really called men in the Bible. Really called men. They're young men. Young men in any instance. Uh, you know, some theologians say from 13 to 20 years old, years of age. But these three Hebrew boys, in a total contrast to Samson. Samson who is self-absorbed, prideful, uh, you know, arrogant person. These three Hebrew boys had their minds made up. And that, that's the tool we're talking about next. The three Hebrew boys had tools and, and the, the resource in dealing with the authorities in a strange land in Daniel chapter 3. We love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word. Daniel chapter 3. You, you see what happened here. The, the Israelites had been taken into captivity. And King Nebuchadnezzar got word that these, these uh, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar had set up an image of gold he wanted people to worship with special types of music, all sorts of music in chapter 3. We can read that. We're going to read that now. This is verse, uh, verse 1 of 3. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. And he set it up in a plain in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together um, together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image of Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Long, long the narrative goes. These three Hebrew boys they already had their mind made up. They knew, uh, "Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one." They knew uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. You worship the Lord. Let, let, let's go right there in just, just a few moments. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. I wanted to go into their names, but uh, that eluded me today. But, but their proper names weren't, weren't what the king gave to them. They weren't their proper names. Verse, uh, let's see, 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Make, make, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or likeness of anything. They wanted to please God. They wanted to have their walk right with God. They had already made up in their mind. You know, some of us, I know we go through trials. This is, this is Sunday school this morning. Make no doubt about it. The heat is on in the world system. Our flesh uh, you know, even even a saint of God who's born again of the water and the Spirit can still be carnal. Uh, the heat is on, and, and the fire, the fire there that they had to go through. That the, the king said, "Look, if you don't worship me and bend and bow the knee, I'm going to turn it up seven times hotter than what it normally is as your judgment uh, for not obeying me." And you know, their backs, their backs never bend or bow. They weren't going to do it. Never then, and never now, if they were still alive. Mm -hmm. They they had their mind made up. So so so. A hundred percent concrete. Never then, never now, Nebuchadnezzar. Let's read exactly what they say. And therefore, at the time the Chaldeans uh, came near, this is verse eight, verse verse eight, and then they they spake unto King uh, Nebuchadnezzar, said, "O King, live forever." This is not the three Hebrew boys. Praise the Lord. And Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These were names. These were names that the king uh, Nebuchadnezzar gave them, kind of shamed them. Like one was the moon god, one was a various other things. This was a different name. The world system may call you by a different name. If they call you by a different name, you don't have to live up to that name. God has given us a name. God has given us His name that's above every name. And you're a chosen people, a, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Uh, you know, let them say what they want to say. We're going to live for God. We're, we're, we're going to be set apart, uh, set aside for God's purposes. Yeah. We're not going to bend or bow our knee, never then and never now. We're, we're, we're not going to link up with the traditions of men. We're an apostolic in doctrine. Yeah. Folks, I think we're all, we're, we're all learned here about being apostolic in doctrine. 
uh, being pre nicaea you know, when it's not Allah, it's not New Age, it's not Hindu, it's not Buddha, it's not it's not Russell, uh, Taze Russell of JWs, it's not Calvin. We're we're linked up with the original apostolic apostles doctrine. Hallelujah. One God, one faith, one baptism. Hallelujah. Look, this is this was instinctive to the Hebrew boys, mm -hmm. instinctive. They, 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 I'm not going to bow. No, we're not going to bow, bend, bow to him. No, it was instinctive, J just like a just like a mallard duck in Canada. You, you know, when they start to get a little little bit uh, where they got to go, where they got to go, it's like a, a mallard duck's not going to lift up a megaphone and say, "All right, boys, come on, let's fly. We're going." The, you, you know, the salmon fish, the salmon fish will instinctively start to go up from Washington up to uh, Alaska. They'll, they'll get maimed, uh, torn up. There'll be an eye falling out. They'll be all maimed up, but they have an instinct to go and spawn, go up to where they, they're going to, they're gonna, uh, you know, the eggs and stuff. They're, they're going to give birth. So they're going to go right back. They're going to go right back to where they started from, instinctively. These Hebrew boys, never then, never now. And, and for, for you and I, we have to have our minds made up as a tool. And, and I, it's been said, if we have our minds made up, three quarters, three quarters of the fight's already won. I'm going to have a made up mind. How about you? Let this mind be in you that is in Christ. Let this mind be in you. Amen. Let's go to chapter uh, 107. I'm sorry, Psalm 107. Psalm 107. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Walter. Add a boy every now and then is great. I appreciate that. Boy. What is Psalm, but nevertheless, Psalm 107. Psalm 107, verse 20. And he said, and he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Uh, I want to see exactly where the Hebrew boys had said exactly. Look, King, this is the way it's going to be. And if you don't like it, sorry. I want to go exactly right there to illustrate the, that point. So God says right here, I, I, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare His works with rejoicing. This is a tool, saint of, saints of God. To the outsider looking in, you're rejoicing, you're running the aisles, you're clapping your hands, you, you're, you, your concophony of noises out of, out of the lips from your mouth, the praises of God. Yes. It won't make sense, but it's going to be a tool for me and you. Yes. You know, jobs, jobs are very, very much easier gotten done if we have the right tools. Yes. If we don't have the right tools, you know, mismanages, it, it, takes a, it takes a whole lot longer to get something done. All right. So this is verse 14, verse 14 of chapter 3, Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar spake unto them and saying, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods and worship the golden image which I have set up? So he's already given them like a nickname, like, like you boy, you're, you, you're the nappy head one, you, you're this god, son, and all this. So the king's giving them like nicknames, already starting to shame them, but then he's putting them on a the spot. He says, Don't do do you not serve do y'all not serve my gods? Not worship the golden image which I have set up? This is the same, you know, there's nothing wrong with masculinity. But there is something wrong when you start to think yourself as, as a god. When you start to raise yourself up, you know, true, I'm standing on a platform elevated, but I'm an ambassador for God, not elevating myself. Like Nebuchadnezzar is doing right here. And he spake and said, No, you're not going to worship me, the golden image. Verse 15. And if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sack, the sack, but the, the harpery, the, the psalm tree, and all these different, all sorts of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. And so he's just saying all this. And, and the boys said in verse 16, or the young man said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. But be it so, our God whom we serve is able. Able. I want to be an able Christian. Amen. God is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Notice that confidence that they have. That confidence that they have right there. The Apostle Paul said that that, that, that was his confidence too. He, his confidence was in the Lord. So we're resuming right here in verse 4, 17. 
If it be so, God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But be it not. I'm talking about having your mind made up as a tool today. <clears throat> so, if, so if I'm talking to future missionaries here, you're on the missionary field, have your mind made up. That's your home. Don't have a secondary address. That's your home. You know, aside from heaven, you're just a pilgrim passing through, but that's your residency. Have your mind made up that you're going to be a good daughter, a son, uh, a good representative for God. Have your mind made up that you're going to be filled with the Spirit every day of your life. Have your mind made up because you see you have to plan well to get the end result. If, if there's poor planning, the result may not be fixed as you want. But it may be, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. But we want to have our mind made up. And that's okay, okay? Because that's going to be strong. That's going to be strong. That's going to be uh, very strong to some. They're going to say, well, look, we did all these works in your name. Uh, sorry. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I'm going to get into some tools about that. The foundation, the, the message, the salvational message. There's only one God. There's only one God. His name is Jesus. God manifested himself in the flesh. Preached unto the Gentiles. God was received. The mystery of godliness has been made known. First uh, Timothy 3.16. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. Uh, you know we know that God was manifested bodily uh, among us. The Godhead bodily. So the Godhead. God is a spirit. He manifested himself in the flesh. Not Nebuchadnezzar. Not the golden image. Not the, uh, the three million dollar private jet. Not, not the, uh, the, the apartment in uh, Lake Tahoe. None of those things matter. And at the very end of the day, we'll just be at best firewood for what's coming. So no, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not going to worship you. And be it not, if God doesn't deliver us, be it known to thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image that thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, full of fury, and, and the form of his visage was changed against these young men. Then he spake and commanded them that the heat should be burned up seven times more than, uh, and so forth and so on. So the men took them, they died. But it is said in the word of God that these, verse 21, Then these men were bound in their coats and, and their, their turbans, their hats and all that, the, the garments, and they were cast into the midst of the burning in the burning fiery furnace and therefore because the king's commandment was urgent the furnace the furnace exceedingly hot the flame of the fire slew the men that took took the boys down and these men uh, the Shadrach Meshach and Abednego fell down uh, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace and and sometimes later sometimes later you know the, the the king looked and he saw four people in the fire there were only three to begin with and the scripture says I guess in verse 28 the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord delivered. And then Nebuchadnezzar spake and he said, Blessed be God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. And uh, so uh, their faith, their mind was already made up. And that's, that's a tool. Praise the Lord. Uh, mem memorable stones, uh, stones of remembrance. Next, we, we need to have uh, we need to have uh, accounts, accounts, scripture in our house, a journal, uh, a victory journal where God's brought you through. Yeah. You need to tell your children, your friends and family again and again, God brought me through. These uh, th these stones of remembrance uh, are are accounts in the Bible, accounts in the Bible where the, uh, a generation had laid up stones where God delivered them and they they honored God. The, a monument was casted, a, a monument had been cast, and so the future subsequent generations could see what 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 that was. They had to look, they had to look, and they had to ask some questions. What meaneth these stones? So we can't forget the old paths. Yes, we're the original apostolic church. Yes, some people call us a vintage tool. But even at, even at that, even at that, we have to tell somebody, look, this is what true Christianity is. It's way before, way before the Council of Nicaea that ultimately led to the Catholic Church creation. That was 381 A.D. Uh, you know, the church started in Jesus' day, A.D. 30, approximately. You know, we, we, you, you want to get the most original you can. 
repentance of sin. Uh, oh, we're talking about a tool today. To repent from sin. To have God's blood applied to your life. You can see it in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts 8, verse 12. Acts 8, 16, 10, and 48, 19, and 15. And we have to have the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit of God, we're none of His. With the evidence of initially speaking in other tongues. There's no other way. There's no other functional uh, church. It's, it's, often said, it's often said that when you appraise a collectible tool, a guide to its value, you start to look at how many counterfeits there are. Satan has tried to devalue the church. Uh, there, there, there's, you can't devalue something. You, you can't tell me my testimony doesn't matter. God brought me from the uttermost. Uh, God brought me from the gutter and set me up somewhere. God gave me a name that's above every name. God gave me identity and heritage and a culture. Look, there can be as many counterfeits out there. But when you start to appraise a collectible tool and you start to see, well, this one's got all these counterfeits here, its value tends to go down. But we, we need to be reassured that uh, you, you're worth dying for. The church is worth dying for. We're, we're, uh, you can't calculate the cost here in, in this. Outreach evangelism is still a tool. How, how, how did many of us get here? Somebody knocked our door. Somebody would be friended, friended us. Somebody said, come, come here. You, you never heard a message like this, honey. Oh, I felt clean when I got washed this way. Come on, you can start on a clean slate. I don't care where you came from, what you've done, what you're into right now. You can sit right beside me. You can sit right beside me because I was right there where you were at one time. You can start on a clean slate. This is a tool. This is a tool. And Satan's trying to devalue the church. And the world system trying to devalue it. The, the, look, the, Calvin didn't come up with this. Luther didn't come up with this. Jesus Christ and the apostles came up with this. Well, actually, Jesus Christ came up with it and the, the apostles learned at his feet. They, they got their minds uh, enlarged. And the, the, the apostolic church started and breaking the bread, carrying the apostles' doctrine. Amen. Having a made-up mind. The three Hebrew young men had a made-up mind. And it's said that three quarters of the fight is just having a made up mind. Mm -hmm. Folks, we have, to, we, have to, we have to find salvation. How to be saved is, is not in the epistles. The, the, the letters written to Rome, Ephesus, Cor Corinth, Thessal uh, Thessalonica. If you're trying to find salvation out of those books, you won't find it until you pass through the book of Acts. The doorway, the actions of the apostles. The, the apostles were learned men at Jesus' feet who heard the word of God. Uh, what did they do? Uh, well, they started in Jerusalem, went to Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. They were faithful to exactly what Jesus did, did say for them to do. They were faithful even to the very end. So we have some tools at hand. We have to use those tools to get the desired results God wants. And God wants us. It's not like we accept the Lord. The Lord has to accept us. And there's only one way, one hope. We have to be accepted by the Lord God. Not, not us just accept the Lord. It doesn't work that way. So there's a contrast. So this morning I talked to you a little bit about the accounts of the lives of Samson and the three Hebrew boys. Samson, Samson started out separated unto God. Separated from his birth and unto his death, unto his death. Samson chose his own fate. He became... He, he, he became uh, he sidetracked. God scrutinized his path. God scrutinizes our path. God looks uh, and examines. He wants to examine and inquire. That narrow path, are we on that way? Are we making friendship with the world that's enmity towards Him? God is intimately concerned with what, how we're walking. And there will be few that find it. I didn't write it, just telling you. There will be few that find it. God says, come out from among them. But Samson did not come out from among them. Samson chose his own faith. Fate. And, and separation is still a tool today. There's guardrails alongside the highway I came down this morning. Separation to separate us from the ditch. There's still safety in separation. Oh, what they tell you, you can't go this and that. I, I, get, I get to do this and that. You know, I'm in the, I'm in the bounds of safety here. Amen. I'm in the bounds of safety. I, I know where I can walk. I know there's boundaries here and there. I know I don't want to cross them. And there's an advocate with Jesus Christ the righteous. It's not when we sin, or it's, it's, not, it's not when we sin, it's if we sin. If we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. God wants us to be holy, for his, He is holy. He's set apart. And God wants us to be with Him. So we need to plan ahead. Don't be like Samson, a womanizer, a fornicator, a self-absorbed, deluded, um, 
Samson. Don't be a Samson. And I talked about the three Hebrew young men having a mind made up as a tool. But Samson, I want to get back to this. Samson, Samson threw away, threw away a tool. He threw away the, the, the jawbone of the donkey. Don't throw away the victory that you've had. Don't throw away the victories. Don't throw away the times that you were around the altar and tarried for the Lord. Don't throw away that morning sacrifice. Don't throw away that prayer for your families. Don't throw away that faith, that shield of faith. That, that the, you, you were, your feet were shrouded with the gospel of preparation and peace. Don't throw that away. Don't throw that sword away. Samson threw it over his shoulder. Don't throw it away. You can attain victory today. The three Hebrew boys had a mind made up. Hallelujah. Well, we, we, we don't want to be children of wrath. We want to be children of God. Not children of the devil, but of our Father, Jesus Christ. We want to be of Him. Is that right? You want to be separated from God? In Jesus' name. Let's give God a hand clap this morning. and Stand, stand, stand if you will. Give God glory. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for all you continue to do. God, I, God, I extracted your word and spoke it just as, as best as I could. God, let it continue to, let it continue to be a fluent in people's heart, God, the tools that they have. The tools are not outdated, but the tools have function that actually do something. We, we want to be repented unto you, Jesus. We want to continue to live for you all the days of our life, God. The paths, uh, the paths that we walk, God, we want to dedicate them to, you, them to you. We don't want to forget the old paths, God, the praying, the worship, God, the red-hot preaching, the, the moves of God that we've, we've been through. We don't want to forget that. God, we want to stir ourselves up and continue in every which way that you've said out practical use and purpose and design we want to be tools for you god having a mind made up in jesus name amen, amen.